Hello Traveller, and welcome to the second part of the Invocation Academy review session for version 4.5. In case you missed it, make sure to check out part 1 where I went over the balance changes and new action cards and gave my first impressions. So far in the first week, looks like my impressions were pretty accurate. But today, it's all about the 4 new character cards, and for each one, I'll be going in-depth on their mechanics, as well as providing deck suggestions for you to try. So, time to deliver the first character introduction, Kirara. Kirara's skill does no damage up front, but does provide two shields and a status. When you switch off of Kirara with the status, you deal one dendro damage and draw one card. There's actually a few odd interactions with the skill to keep in mind. First, the status does stack up to two times, so you can actually use it more than once, but keep in mind first of all the shield does not stack, and you only deal damage when you switch off of Kirara specifically and not off of another character. So even if you were to stack it up twice, you will have to eventually find your way back to Kirara in order to trigger it again. And this works if you're switched off Kirara for any reason at all by, for example, an overload or if Kirara goes down. Her talent uses her skill and, while equipped, reduces the cost to switch off of Kirara by one once around. Again, weirdly enough, you only get this bonus when you switch off of Kirara specifically, and this isn't at all tied to just having her status active, which means a lot of the time this is more restrictive than changing shifts, and even if you can trigger it more than once, it's probably not worth playing. Her burst costs 3 dendro and 2 energy and does 4 dendro damage initially, but attaches a status to the opposing side with 2 usages. Then, when your opponent plays 2 action cards, it'll immediately use 1 stack to deal 1 dendro damage to their active character. One thing to watch out for, the number displayed here on the status tracks the number of stacks remaining from the burst, not the number of actions played. For example, even after playing one action card at the beginning, the status here will say 2, and then drops down to 1 once another action card is played. Don't mistake this for counting the number of action cards you've already played. It's confusing because it's going to work a little bit differently from Electro Assistant status, which we'll see a little bit later. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's anywhere that tracks the card count, so you're just going to have to remember, and do keep in mind this count does carry over between turns and doesn't reset. While Kirara's skill is pretty unique, it's a bit awkward to use because you not only have to plan on switching off her early, but then eventually switching back so you can skill again and burst. The burst is pretty powerful overall with 6 total damage and 3 dendro applications, however your opponent does have full control over when and where 2 of those damage will go. It's pretty easy for them to just play, for instance, 4 cards immediately and waste the extra dendro application, but even if they do that, you did still get a 6 damage burst out of the deal, which is decent enough. Occasionally though, your opponent could even use your own burst against you by potentially intentionally sacrificing a character to that damage, giving them a free switch onto a different character. For both these reasons, Kirara's kit is a little bit awkward, particularly using with existing characters. Your best bet is to try and make use of the timing on her Dendro skill as much as possible, as one thing it can do is guarantee a reaction if you combine it with a quick swap. So, one character that loves guaranteeing Dendro is none other than Nilo, so why not try this Bloom deck Nilo Kirara Nouvellet? With your previous Dendro options, opponents were often very able to dodge your Bloom round 1 and cause you to delay your setup that much more. However, if you have a quick swap ready in round 1 with either Catherine or Leave It To Me, you can always guarantee a Bloom right away with Nilo. Plus, the shield and card draw from Kirara work pretty nicely with this double Hydro team and the overall strategy for Bloom trying to survive until the end of round 3. Nouvellet here mostly just acts like a pretty efficient anchor with a built-in heal skill, but can easily be replaced by any other solo Hydro characters that you like, for instance Ayato or Child. If you want to see this deck in action, I recently played 7 games of it on stream, so definitely go check out the VOD for that if you're curious. And for our next exclusive, Charlotte. Charlotte's skill does 1 cryo damage initially, but leaves a status that deals 1 cryo damage at the end of the next 2 rounds, kind of like Signora's skill, but lasting an extra round. One of the difference is that on the final hit, if the opponent happens to already be affected by cryo, it actually deals an additional damage. Note though that this is only for the final hit, and so the first activation will always do 1 damage regardless of whether or not the character is already affected by cryo. Her talent uses her skill, and while equipped, once around when a character uses a normal attack, and any character on your opponent's side has Charlotte's debuff, the character attacking will heal for 2 HP. While it does have quite a decent amount of value, it's a little bit niche because of course it only works with normal attacks, and since you want to start on Charlotte most of the time, means you'll probably really need to draw it round 1 for it to have a good effect on the game. But it's also not as likely to come up in those early rounds. Definitely has some potential in some decks, but overall I'd recommend against using the talent. 
Her burst costs 3 cryo and 2 energy and deals 1 cryo damage, healing all of your characters for 1. It leaves behind a 2U summon that does 1 cryo damage and heals the active character for 1. Because of that heal on her burst, I've seen a lot of players try to use her in stall decks, however, the main issue you run into is that her skill is pretty aggressive and has no defensive utility. Even with her talent equipped, stall decks often tend to use skills much more than normal attacks, which would make it really awkward to trigger the healing. That said, combining her with a strong Hydro applicator like Nuvalet can be an effective way to play around Freeze, as you are able to repeatedly apply Cryo to the same character to threaten them over multiple rounds. Another way you can use her off-field application is by using a Nemo character to trigger a swell of a different element. Of course, if you've played with or against Signora, you know that one strategy to avoid the multiple cryo applications is to simply switch the character off-field and let them tank all the hits. And Charlotte has a similar weakness, although because of how her last hit works, you'll actually get a little bit of bonus damage or application no matter what, which is nice. So, like Signora, she definitely benefits from characters like Thunder Manifestation that can hit off-field and guarantee a reaction off of that initial cry application from her skill. So, why not try this deck with Lynette? Round 1, you are looking to use Charlotte's skill, followed up with Manifestation for hopefully a guaranteed Superconduct. Then you can continue to stay on Manifestation or go back to Charlotte to apply Cryo onto a different character. Eventually you'll want to finish on Lynette, who at this point is very likely to swell Cryo or Electro into a Superconduct reaction off-field for massive AoE damage. If you've played with or against Fischl Cube Lynette, this is a very similar strategy, just slightly different elemental order. It also tends to be a little bit less aggressive and oftentimes can play a slower game by combining Charlotte's Burst Heal with Lynette's Sustain to outlast aggressive decks. This deck too was one of the decks I played recently on stream, so make sure to check that out if you want to see some gameplay. And next up, it's time to judge the high judge himself, Nouvellette. His main mechanic revolves around his Source Water Droplet status, and you get them in one of two ways. One is his skill, which deals 2 Hydro Damage and leaves behind one of these droplets, and the other is his Burst, which deals 2 Hydro Damage and 1 Piercing Damage to off-field characters, and provides 2 droplets. In total, you can stack up to 3 droplets. The way you use the droplets is with his normal attack, which as a Catalyst user deals 1 Hydro Damage. If you use this while he has one or more droplets, then one of these will be consumed and he'll heal 2 HP as well as setting up a prepare skill. The follow up skill has two different effects based on Nuvalet's HP. If he's at 5 or less, it'll deal 2 hydro damage, or if he is at 6 or more HP, it'll deal 3 hydro damage but deal 1 piercing damage to Nuvalet. A few things to keep in mind about the prepare skill, it is tagged as a normal attack so it will benefit from any buffs that buff normal attack damage. However, because it is a prepared skill, it doesn't trigger things that go off of normal attacks, for instance, Toma's Burst. Those effects only trigger on the first part of the normal attack where you set up the prepare skill. His talent uses his normal attack, and while equipped, once around, whenever any character triggers a Hydro-related reaction, Nuvalet gets a buff that increases his next two hits by one damage. Note that any of your characters can trigger this, it doesn't have to be Nuvalet. So we have our first character with a prepared normal attack. There'll be two common sequences you'll take with Nuvalet. Most often you'll skill into normal which triggers a prepared normal after, then burst. Or alternatively, you can use someone like Raiden to power out the burst right away, skipping the skill entirely. But once you've bursted once, you can then normal twice to build 2 energy and burst again and repeat without ever having to go back to the skill. If you add it all up, each droplet essentially accumulates to about 5 value worth of damage. Either it's 1 or 2 net HP gained and 3 or 2 hydro damage, depending on what HP threshold you're at. By the numbers, this is actually quite a lot, but as we've seen previous characters with prepare skills, these are notoriously difficult to build around because they can often leave your character very vulnerable to counterattacks, especially by making your play very predictable. Gaining that 2 HP does help a little, but your opponent will still get to act after your prepared skill hits, at which point Nuvalet might be just at 5 HP as well after taking self damage. But of course the benefit to this is similar to Sayu, having a skill that hits twice means you can double up on buffs like weapon bonuses and Bennett's burst, which can allow Nuvalet to output quite a lot of damage. Though while that's true, I've seen a lot of decks trying to utilize him along with Stall and using Nuvalet as a carry. However, despite him healing on normal attacks, I'm really not sure if this is the right approach. You still need to skill before you set up that first droplet, and then having to commit to a prepare skill is actually very dangerous for a Stall deck. He often leaves himself way too vulnerable to be a reliable carry. Where he does excel though is in mid-range strategies and as an anchor, similar to how Lynette tends to operate. Another strategy you can use to get around the downside of having a prepare skill is to play him as the finisher in a Hyper Magic, that is Gilded plus Jet, deck. If your opponent has passed the turn and you've a lot of dice remaining, then you can safely chain normals and finish them off all in one go. 
Of course, we already saw a Nuvula deck earlier as the anchor to the Nilo Bloom deck, but for another suggestion, you can try the more combo-centric Raiden Bennett Nuvolet. Raiden's Burst here lets you set up both Bennett and Nuvolet's Burst, allowing you to chain together prepare skills buffed by Bennett's Burst. Also, since Nuvolet heals himself before each normal, you can even skip Bennett talent in this deck as you're pretty reliably able to heal and be above the required HP to trigger the damage bonus. And last of all, we have a character that finally has a card despite being in the game from day one, Electro Sisson Mage. Her skill summons Sissons with a usage of three, which is also their max. While this is active, your opponent will have a status that starts to count up any time they play any action card, up to a max of three as well. Once this hits three, it will reset back to zero and add another count to your Sisson summon. If your Sissons happen to already be at 3 stacks, then this status will stay until that count drops below 3 and then trigger. Do note that if you happen to lose your Sissons, the status goes away along with any progress you've made. Also, just like Cryo Sisson, anytime Electro Sisson takes elemental reaction damage, you will lose 1 stack on your summon. Her talent uses her skill, and once around, whenever your Sissons are at 3 stacks, before you choose your action, it will fire one use immediately. Note that because of the timing, when you actually play the talent, it won't fire right away, but you have to wait for your opponent to pass the turn back to you, so they will get a chance to respond. Her talent is actually quite important, and I probably wouldn't play Electro Sisson without building around it. With how quickly most games end, you're very unlikely to be able to make use of every single added stack without the talent. But once you have the talent equipped, she can output a significant amount of Electro to rival that even official. Most of the time, you'll even want to play Storm Terra's Lair just to increase your chances of drawing it in your opening hand. Her burst is a prepare skill with the first part dealing one electro and adding one shield plus one for each Sisson up to a max of three shields. She also applies electro to herself allowing you to cleanse potentially. Then the follow up hit deals another two electro damage. While the burst is really interesting, with how you usually play her you're really incentivized to open with her skill and then never swap back to Sisson to avoid elemental reactions and losing your usages, making it really difficult to generate that second energy. Most of the time, if you happen to, it will be after losing a character and playing I haven't lost yet, or you might be running star signs. But really, her burst is not all that important and her utility is almost all in her skill. With talent, you can pretty much count on your Sisson to fire off five or more times in a single game with just one skill use, which actually is an incredible amount of value. So with that in mind, you could try Sisson Mona Nahida. To some, this deck might look familiar as it is an older deck that used to have Fischl instead of Sisson, and was one of the best decks at dealing AoE damage. But with Sisson Talent and Storm Terror's Lair, if you can open with that powered up skill, it allows you to output a lot more Electro than you would normally with Fischl. The typical opening here is to go from Sisson to Mona, and then skill again on Mona at the start of round 2, and then go to Nahida. If you happen to open with Storm Terror's Lair, you can also get a discounted 5 cost on Nahida. Otherwise, you can simply skill and build to her burst. Then, if any characters go down, it's a good opportunity to go back to Sisson and burst with I Haven't Lost Yet if you drew it. And there we have our four new characters. Overall, I like this latest batch quite a lot. They all feel quite distinct from any existing character and gives us some new ways to play them alongside existing characters. Additionally, we have two characters with skills that rely on your opponent playing cards as well as a first prepared normal attack, both of which are new mechanics. And none of the characters stand out as being immediately overpowered, which is actually great, and they all seem to fill a pretty nice niche. Definitely looking forward to see if any of these characters end up being good enough to play in tournaments. If you are a newer player, be sure to attend the TCG 101 series to level up your Genius Invocation game. If there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video, drop a comment and I'll see how I can help. Be sure to enroll in our courses by subscribing so you can be notified when a new lesson is available. Until then, class dismissed!